In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this self-locking package delivery box. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so a package delivery person comes. They deliver a very important package. When they close the lid, it automatically locks. With a key, we can unlock it, get out our breakfast, set this back to a primed position, and lock it. Now it's ready for the next delivery. There are three main components that we need to make. Number one is this arm that rotates around a bolt. Number two is this wedge that's attached to the lid. And the last piece is this lock block that's attached to the key mechanism. We'll also need to route this pocket out of the lid. I built this prototyping box out of some 3 quarter MDF and left one side open so that I could access the mechanism to see what I needed to do with the arm, the pocket, and the lock block. So the entire mechanism, the lock block and the arm, need to have five different positions happening. And I think I've done a pretty good job of getting five positions out of only two moving parts. The first thing that needs to happen after accessing and the package and get, removing it is to move the arm into the pre-primed position. We'll then close the lid and with the key we'll turn that lock block. Now that pushes the arm over center into the primed position. It's now resting against a pocket that's in the lid. This is waiting for a delivery person now to deliver a package. When the lid is opened the arm falls to the locked position. The package is put in the box. The package delivery person closes the box, and now it's in the locked position. To get the package out, insert the key, rotate the lock block, and now the box is opened, and I can retrieve the package. To start it over again, we move the arm back to the pre-primed position. When designing the mechanism for this box, I had four criteria in mind. First, it needed to be all wood, or mostly wood, because I wanted it to where any of you could make this box in your garage shop. Number two, it needed to be self-locking. That is, the package delivery person opens the door, closes the door, and it locks. Number three, unable for somebody to steal it and open the lid even if they saw this video and know how the mechanism works. And number four, a fully closed lid. I didn't want the lid propped open or something like that that I've seen in some other videos. I want it fully closed. I have kids. I know they're going to be using this as a bench to sit on. So it needs to be fully closed even when it's in the armed position. I was unable to find any other design that met this criteria, so I started to design my own. And yes, I know this mechanism will only accept one delivery at a time, and I was okay with that. When designing the arm, it took a lot of time and effort. I made several paper templates, cardboard templates, wood templates, until I got it to the right shape, the right weight, so while this video is about creating a package box, I'm actually not going to show you how to make a box. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube to make a box. I'm going to concentrate on this lock mechanism. However, I went and grabbed two inches, two hinges yesterday from Menards, and my three-year-old proceeded to lose one of them already. So I either have to find it or go get another one. In the meantime, we'll start working on that lock mechanism. I'm going to use the same pallet wood that I used on the box to make that V-shaped block. Okay. 
I put a little wedge behind my block to set it at the right angle. I got a hold down here holding the blocks fast so that I can be safe. I put the box on its side here. This is actually the front of the box. Here's that little wedge-shaped piece that will get attached to the lid. And we need to cut that out on the front of the box. So I'm just gonna use pencil and mark it off. This pallet wood has been sitting beside my garage for several years, so pretty dirty. I sanded it off a little bit so a mechanical pencil can mostly be used on it, but it's really rough, so I gotta be careful. Anyway, that's what I need to cut out. Wish me luck that this will go straight. I usually like power tools, but lately I've kind of liked using a handsaw. Maybe not. Use the jigsaw to finish up the cut and make it square. So let's see how it fits with our uh, wedge piece that we created earlier. That looks really good. I like it. What is this called? Mm, this. Jigsaw. Very good. This piece. That's this. As you're working on these pieces, make certain you keep center lines of everything. So I have the center line drawn completely around this block. I also have center line going down here. And I'm going to continue that further down because all the measurements are based on the center line. Hopefully I can get that done. Then we'll get out the templates of where we need to drill holes and the other pieces we need to make. In the PDF in the description, there are two templates. The first is that block that we're going to attach to the lid, along with a couple of drill points. The pivot for the arm and the stop where the screw goes. The second template is the design of the arm. Now. I've done the arm a couple of different ways in my prototyping. I did it in three-quarter plywood. I did it in quarter-inch plywood. I really think half-inch might be just the ticket. So I have a piece of scrap half-inch plywood that's just the right size. So we'll get the template cut out, adhered to the plywood, and get that cut out. With the template adhered to the wood, I'm going to cut it out with the jigsaw, and then we'll sand it close. We will be adding some additional weight to the arm, and that weight needs to be between the cyan line and the green line, but mostly close to the cyan line. Now that the arm is done, let's use the other template to get the position of that pivot hole, as well as the screw that acts as a stop. The second template is designed for the inside of the box. So we'll get this put in the box, get these measured out, for the pivot hole and for the screw that will be the stop. For the stop, you could be fancy, put a doll here. I'm just gonna put a screw and make it easy. I 
All right, on the inside of the box, I got the pivot bolt mounted. I got the stop screw installed. Next, we'll work on that lid. On the lid, I've marked out where the wedge goes with the center line. And then from the center line, over three inches, I'm gonna make a pocket with the router that the arm will fit into. The length of it is three inches. The width of it, I'm gonna make one inch, but it's really not all that important. My arm is half inch wide. I'm gonna make it an inch wide for the pocket, and that should be sufficient enough. So, take the router and just freehand that pocket. If the lid is three quarter inch thick, I'm gonna make a half inch deep pocket. The wedge block now needs a three quarter inch hole drilled in it for the key mechanism. Two inches down from the top, I've marked that down. So we'll get to the drill press and drill that hole out. To attach the wedge to the lid, I'm gonna use some waterproof glue and a couple pocket screws. How the arm is weighted and balanced makes a big difference because we're relying on that. So I borrowed the kitchen scale here. I went ahead and set it to grams because it kind of makes it easier for multiplication, but use whichever unit you would like. By weigh it, it's about 92 grams. Now we need to take that times 0.6. If we do that, we get to about 55 grams. I need to add an additional 55 grams of weight to this arm in order to get it to pivot correctly. So I grabbed a few large nuts, some washers and screws in order to hold them onto the arm. And that's 53 grams. That'll work great. The blue line and green line that are on the template mark the upright locations of the arm when it's in the pre-prime and the primed position. So we need our weights to be in that area in order for the center of gravity to fall over center. I have found it's best to line them kind of up just inside the blue line. So I'm going to line my weights up just inside the blue line and I'll get those screwed into place. Before I go any further and actually put the lock on it, I'd like to make sure this arm mechanism is working properly and balanced properly because it's very important that it has this over center balance. So first off, I want to make sure when I put it up in the upper position that it actually stays there and doesn't fall over by itself. And then I want to close the lid and make sure when I push it with my finger in here. Yep, I heard it click over center. So now it's resting against that the pocket in the lid. When I open it up, it moves to the locked position. So it's working great. On the lock arm, we need to drill a hole in it. So now on the prototype, you can see I drilled a relief hole in the center and that's for this screw that's on top of the lock mechanism so that there's some clearance there. So we'll do that on this block. I put a half inch Forstner bit in my drill press in order to drill the relief hole. The lock mechanism has a lot of parts to it. The barrel itself is available in several different lengths so depending if you're using three quarter material or something larger you can get this in different lengths. So we'll put the barrel in. This is the inside where I drew the pocket holes. We'll also use this plate here, which has these spikes in it that dig into the wood. 
Now, we'll want to make sure that the flats on this are either vertical or horizontal. It doesn't matter if they're vertical or horizontal. We can work with it either way. Just make sure they're not at an angle. I'm going to hammer those spikes down in here. Now the lock mechanism comes in. And then the nut. You can use your giant three-quarter inch, or sorry, seven-eighths inch wrench to put this on. But I also have a little stubby 22 millimeter, so I'll use that to put it on. The barrel goes in next. This plate goes on, and there's a little nub on here, and that's where the opening needs to go. Now, I usually have to try this a couple of different times before I get it this all in the right position because you can turn these things 90 degrees from one another and then it operates differently. So I usually have to put it together and then think about it a little bit. You know you have it positioned correctly and all put together right when the lever is flipping between the 3 o'clock position and the 6 o'clock position. I'll leave a link to the lock mechanism in the description below. Now, when putting this block on, the wedge is designed to be just thin enough to where we can access that hole here with a screwdriver. So I can put this on. There's just enough room here to put this in. So, before going any further, I'm going to test this assembly with the arm to see if that works. As the lid comes down, it should lock, just like it does in the prototype. But it's not working here. I'll have to make some adjustments. The solution to it not locking is just sanding off a little bit on the edge. Okay, let's test that again. Works great. With preliminary testing complete, I'm going to attach the lock assembly to the lid. I'm not going to glue it just yet. I want to make sure everything's working perfectly well. Then I'll take it apart and glue it and screw it. Now for the first full test. Okay, we'll put the arm in the pre primed position. Close the door, turn the lock to the locked position. Now the arm has swung to the primed position. The package delivery person comes, opens the door, puts the package in. I can see the arm has moved to the locked position. Close the lid, and now it's locked. Put in the key, turn it 90 degrees. Unlocked and get my package. I did make an indicator flag to go on the side of the box to show when a package has been delivered. It's just a piece of metal painted red. When the box is opened, the flag falls away. The mechanism is just a magnet that holds the metal. When the box is closed back up to reset it, bring the metal back up to the magnet. Initially, I was concerned about the amount of gap that happened even when this was locked. But I've tried with a screwdriver to pry open the mechanism and haven't been able to do it. Of course, somebody could get a big crowbar in there and pop this all apart, but this isn't really designed for that kind of thief. However, if this gap does bother you, you can always make a bigger plate that goes over the top of this one and just glue it in place to cover up that gap. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the build and we did eventually find the lost hinge.